Good evening, church family. So glad that you decided to join with us tonight in our adult Bible study online. And tonight we are going to continue on in our lesson of Heroes of Hebrews. And tonight we probably have what I would maybe call one of the most beautiful portions of scripture in regards to that which is redemption and God's grace. And uh, um, we, we're studying, we've been studying out Hebrews chapter 11. And last week we looked at the faith of Israel. And tonight we're going to look at the faith of Rahab. And, and so I hope you'll grab your Bibles and um, grab something to take some notes with, stay engaged with the, with the uh, lesson. Um, if you would like, you can share this lesson on any of our platforms. Maybe you've missed previous lessons. You could go to the archive section. They're on Facebook or YouTube, and you can find the previous lessons to catch up with us, and they'll always be available right there on those particular platforms. And uh, uh, comment, let us know that you're here, and let, let me know if I can do anything for you. You know, our, our, our message here, our, our mission at Beacon Baptist Church is simply, excuse me, is to find and follow Jesus. And in these lessons, the heroes of Hebrews, we have looked at great giants of faith that did exactly that. They found Christ and they followed after him. And they followed after uh, God and, and, and what God wanted for in their lives. And they helped others do the same. And tonight's lesson is no different. Hebrews chapter 11 says in verse 31, it says, By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. Once again, this is a very interesting portion of scripture. And last week we examined the faith of Israel and we looked at two particular events in their life. We looked at the event of them crossing the Red Sea. And then we looked at the event here that is really connected with Rahab. We looked at them and their surrounding of Jericho and the marching around of this city. And we know who was inside Jericho. And that was Rahab and a, a, a lady that some spies had met beforehand. We'll see that uh, here in just a second. But what is this really a, rem a reminder of? I, I, I think it's a reminder that really no case, no circumstance, uh, nothing that we can imagine in our lives is too hard for our God. We serve a great God. We serve a gracious God. But we also serve a mighty God. A God who is able to make that whole which, which was broken. And, and he is certainly uh, gave us scripture here to study out to prove that out. Here was a, a lady that even here in the book of Hebrews, of verse 31, it says, By faith, it doesn't just say Rahab. By faith, Rahab sounds in our mind a lot better than by faith, the harlot Rahab. So a reminder of who she was. It was a reminder of what God had done in her life. You know, that is a horrible word that is associated with a woman. Um, in fact, I, I, I don't know many young girls and uh, many older ladies by the name of Rahab, and maybe because of this association with that word. But we find here that Rahab is a beautiful picture of God's grace. And the only way that she received God's grace was by her faith. And exactly how, how we come to the Lord, the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, is exactly the way that Rahab came to the Lord. We read this scripture and we see this word that is associated with her. And we think, how did God use this woman? Maybe you're watching tonight and you think in your mind, maybe you think of a word that maybe nobody else in this world would associate with you, but you would associate with you. And you think, how will God possibly use me? Well, if he can use Rahab, and he did in a mighty way, maybe in a way that you didn't even realize, we'll see that tonight. And, um, and God can certainly use you, and he wants to use you. He wants to do a great work in your life, just as he did a great work in Rahab's life. And he can do that work if we will simply allow him to do that. Rahab demonstrates something that all of us need in our life. 
she demonstrates the fact that um, we, we have to live by faith. And we have to live out in, 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 in hope and knowing that God will do something in our life. And so let's look at a few of these things tonight. And, uh, and, and I, I believe if, if you uh, follow along in the lesson tonight, that your faith will be encouraged. You'll fit, your faith will be encouraged. And, and through that encouragement, it'll go forth and, and you'll do something mighty for the Lord. The first thing we're going to look at is her escape of judgment. The fact that she escaped judgment. Remember uh, this, the scene that is being set here in Hebrews chapter 11. It is taking us all the way back to Joshua chapter 2. And we saw that last week in the surrounding, of the, but really before the surrounding of the walls. Uh, but this scene takes place in Jericho. This is a city that we know based on scripture that is under judgment from God. You say, well, how do we know that it's under judgment from God? Well, Exodus chapter 15, remember when the people first came out of Egypt, they were supposed to go into the promised land and they sent out the 12 spies and, um, and, and only two of those spies were good and, and said, we can, you know, the Lord has given us this land and the other 10 just did not have the faith that God would. And, um, and so therefore God uh, judged them by making them wander in the wilderness for 40 years. And, but in Exodus chapter 15, we know that that land had been given to the children of Israel. So every person in that land that was not a Hebrew was under God's judgment. Uh, they were, uh, un, they were, they. These were people that were dwelling in a land that was not theirs, and it was not a land that God had for them. God had a people for that land, and He had promised that land to a people. And God always comes through on His promises. And so this was a land that was under judgment. And and so here we see, we find uh, Rahab. Sometimes we might wonder. How did she know that God was going to give the victory to the children of Israel? Up until this point, we really don't, well, we really know nothing outside of her occupation of what Rahab was. And I, I, the, this book that we're going through mentions that maybe she was some type of priestess and um, that in, in, their, uh, in their particular culture of religion, a very vulgar religion, uh, would have really placed an emphasis on this type of lifestyle and uh, in, in these, these heathen temples and those particular things. And maybe that's true. I, I, I don't know if that's particularly true. And, uh, but we do know that she was very much into that particular lifestyle. And you say, how did this woman who was into a, a, a sinful lifestyle know this about God? Joshua sends spies out to the land to investigate the city, right? And Joshua uh, sends these spies into Jericho before the destruction takes place. And we find this portion of scripture in Joshua chapter 2. We will not take the time to read of all Joshua chapter 2. I challenge you to do that maybe in your Bible reading this week. Uh, but we get to uh, verse number 25, where, uh, excuse me, we, we get to a verse where Rahab testifies. She says, the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in the earth. And that's in verse number 11. And so here, right away, as the spies come in, uh, they, they, they meet Rahab. Uh, they come into uh, this particular house. And she immediately begin, begins to, tes to testify, says, for the Lord your God. He is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. He testifies, she testifies that she knew that the God of the Hebrew, right? She says, the Lord your God. She doesn't say my God yet. And we'll see that here in a minute. And the Lord your God. And uh, she, she testifies that she knows that he is God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. She, she's testifying of some faith or what she knows is going to take place. Uh, maybe while the children of Israel were wandering in the wilderness for those 40 years, a word had gotten out from God's promises of Exodus chapter 15, where the land had been given to the Hebrews. And, and she was just one that happened to believe that. She knew once the children of Israel were making their way towards Jericho, that she was living in a city of judgment. This, 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 this place that she lived was going to be judged. Yet she heard of the greatness of God. I don't know all the stories she heard of. Maybe she heard of the crossing of the Red Sea. Maybe she heard of the drowning of the Egyptians. Maybe she heard of 
God feeding his people in the wilderness or the, uh, the, the pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. Uh, I, don't, I don't know all what she heard about God, but what she did hear about God led her to testify of his greatness. She concluded her, her, her first interaction with these spies with, once again, the Lord your God, he's God in heaven above and in earth. Think about this woman for a moment. <laughs> Think about where she lived in, in this awful uh, city of the Canaanites. Think about what she was engaged in. The Bible, once again, identifies her as a harlot. And yet, we find her here in Hebrews chapter 11 as a woman who escaped judgment. God, God identifies her as a harlot here in, in these verses. But before we become, once again, too hard on her, let's remember what she did not have. She did not have the word of God in her life like we have in our life. She, but yet she recognized that the God of the Hebrews was the true and living God. She, we, we see here where though it mentions her occupation and, and maybe we wouldn't think it, but in her interaction, we find where she has a great heart for her family as she speaks to the spies, trying to get all of her family uh, saved alive just as she would. She thought about what God had possibly done for those Israelites and how she would love to see the Lord do those same things in her own family. And yet, here she is. She lives, she's a woman who has an awful lifestyle, living in a city under judgment. You know, this is a reminder to us as Christians, and if I can speak to Christians only for just a second here on, on this particular lesson, isn't this a great reminder for us that know the truth to get out and to tell people that have never heard the truth, the truth of who God is, and testify in our own life of what God has done in our life? Because truth be told, we have a very similar story to Rahab. We live in it, on a earth that is going to be judged. The Bible promises that. It's not something that we, uh, that we love to talk about, but yet we live on an earth that is going to be judged one day. We live in, in, in a body, a soul, that will face judgment one day. And we're condemned. Our sin has condemned us. And our sin has condemned us to, to, to death. Yet God makes a way. Just as he made a way for Rahab, he made, he made a way for us. And hopefully we'll go out and we'll testify of his greatness in our life so that others will hear it and they will also come to Christ and, and, and to the knowledge of salvation just as this lady did. She recognized that there was a great difference between her people in that city of Jericho and the people that surrounded the city of Jericho. And she wanted, she, what she wanted for her and her family was to believe in the one true and living God. There are truly things to admire about this woman. Her recognition for who God is, her love for her family, and her wanting to hear some people don't want to hear, and they had the truth. This woman had very little portions of the truth, and she was willing to hear. She was willing to exercise that faith and put her faith in the one true and living God. And because of that, God made a way of salvation for her. The next part we'll look at is the escape from judgment. Or the first part we looked at is the escape from judgment. The next part we look at is the way to salvation. This portion of scripture is often referred to as the story of the harlot and the scarlet thread. We find here, once again, in Joshua chapter 2, the next verses, the command, uh, they, they, the spies leave and they tell her, we will save your family, or we will save you and everybody in, in your family, everybody that gathers with you will be saved. And they asked her to do something. They, they say, uh, Behold, when we come to the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which thou didst let us down by, and shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his hand, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in, this, in the house, his blood shall be on our head. 
And, and so they make this promise to Rahab that, that everybody that will be in her house, and that house that would be, be identified with that scarlet thread would be saved alive. Joshua chapter six comes, and they go and they take the, uh, they they take Jericho, and she is saved, and all of her family. And there's a very interesting verse there in Joshua chapter six. I'll give you a second to grab your Bible. I want you to look at it. It's in verse number 25, uh, Joshua chapter six, verse 25. It mentions that last part there, and it says, "She dwelleth in Israel even unto this day." And that's speaking of, of, of this day. And, and meaning her, her, her lineage was part of Israel forever. Forever. What, what got her there? What provided this safety? We find, what we find here is this beautiful picture of Christ in the Old Testament. You know, sometimes people will skip over the Old Testament, and, and it's such a mistake. There are so many pictures of Christ in the Old Testament. God gave us the fullness of Scripture uh, to study out and to apply into our lives, and, and there's so much written about Christ in the Old Testament that I, I hope you don't. I hope you don't miss that. I hope I hope you take the time uh, to read the fullness of Scripture. I, I know we live in the age of grace, and we're part of a New Testament church, um, but the Old Testament is, is profitable and it's true. And, and it points us to Christ all over the place. And this spot was no different. This scarlet thread hanging from her window, this scarlet thread uh, that, that was hanging that down the, the, the wall of, of, um, from underneath her window. It, it, it said, what, what, what was it a picture of? What was a picture of Christ? It was a picture of his blood. It was a picture of what Revelation chapter 13 verse 8 says, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. It was this beautiful picture of what bought us our redemption, the redeeming blood of Jesus Christ. Rahab was saved, her family was saved. She was brought to God and spared. The way of salvation was found by her to be the same way that we did find it. Found it through putting faith, by trusting only in the blood of Christ and what he did to redeem our souls. This beautiful picture of the scarlet, scarlet thread is a representation of what Christ did on the cross of Calvary and the fact that she had to put her trust in that scarlet thread. It was a picture of her faith. It was faith being put into action. She chose to accept what God had given her as a way of redemption. You know, there's only one way of salvation, and that way is through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. And his redemptive work on the cross of Calvary, the fullness of the gospel, um, him dying on the cross and being buried and him raising again for, on, on the third day, uh, that, that is who Christ is. And he, and he provided that for us to have a way he, Christ knew that we lived in a, in a judged world. We lived under judgment, and he made a way of salvation, just as he did for this woman, Rahab. And then lastly, we see the witness of her faith. The witness of her faith. It says, by faith, the harlot Rahab perished not. We find her, and we see all of who she brought into that house. Maybe we ask the question, who shall be spared in the judgment of this world? Well, just as the same for Rahab, the only people that escaped judgment in this city of Jericho was only those that trusted in that starlit, th starlit thread, those who trusted Rahab's words, her faith, her witness. They gathered together. Who would be, who would be spared from judgment in our world? It'll be the same. It'll be those who put their faith and trust in Jesus and Jesus alone. <laughs> There's such a beautiful picture that, that brings us to a, a close in this lesson. If you turned your Bible over to Matthew, uh, where it starts the lineage of Christ's kingly line, his, lead, his legal line, should we say, what we find is that this woman Rahab, you know what she became? She became the grandmother 
to one of the most beloved persons in all of Scripture, David. The great and mighty warrior for the Lord, the gracious king for the Lord, and the person that God promised would come at what, what, what the line of, of Christ would come from, which means that Rahab, through Rahab, her faith, what did her faith do for her? Oh, well, it got her into this line that Christ himself would come from. I, I started the lesson out tonight mentioning that uh, it, it, it is truly one of the most beautiful pictures in all of Scripture about redemption. And it comes full circle all the way in Matthew chapter 1. We see that from her all the way down to Christ. What a, what a wonderful God we serve. She was taken into this royal line, this kingly line, the, the line for which our Savior would come. Why? Why? Well, she put her, she put her faith in, in, in God. She showed great faith. She, I, what, what, did, she eventually, did she become ashamed of her occupation beforehand? Well, sin always brings shame. It always brings shame. But what can wash away that shame? Well, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but that scarlet thread for her to start a new life. A life in the midst of God's people being one of God's people. Verse 25 of, of Joshua uh, chapter 6 mentioned that. She, she dwells in this land even unto this day. I mean, no, no person can, can, can deny that she is one of them. No person would say David wasn't an Israelite. Oh, he is. He is. You say, well, wait a minute. If, I, if you trace that back, well, he's got a portion of the Canaanite blood in him. Yes. Yes, he does. Grafted into the family of God, just as us. Just as us. We're born in this sinful blood, this sinful nature, the nat this, sin this sin nature that came all the way from Adam and Eve. And yet... We get grafted into the family of God, all we, because we put our faith and trust in Christ. She had witness of her faith. Her deeds testified of her faith. You know, the Bible teaches us in regards to faith that our faith without works is dead. It doesn't mean that we're saved by works. Just as we've studied out in Scripture, several of these uh, previous he uh, heroes, uh, like Abraham, uh, what saved Abraham wasn't uh, him, his, the act, the work of taking Isaac up the mountain. It was his belief that God would save, save them. It was his belief in God. Just as this woman, uh, she was not saved by her works, but she certainly proved her faith by her works. You know, this is what we should try to live for. Each and every day, proving our faith by our works. Proving what's inside of us by the things that we do, the things that we say. Could, could I ask the question tonight, are we being a witness for our faith? Are we being a witness for our faith? Such a powerful testimony from this lady. Maybe she did. Maybe she was. Maybe, well, I mean, God mentions it in her, in her testimony of Hebrew, in Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, the harlot Rahab. Maybe she started her story just like that. Wasn't afraid to tell her fullness of her story. I was once a harlot. But through the redemption that God and God only can offer, I became part of the line of Christ. My grandson became the king. What a wonderful, wonderful picture of who God is and what God can do in our life. Let's not make less of what God can do because God is able to, in our life, if we're willing to let him, he is able to do abundant and, and abundantly above all that we think. Why? Because his grace is abundant, his mercy is abundant. And if, if we would simply choose to be a vessel to be used by him, he will choose to use us in a great way. Finding and following Jesus, that is, that is how we should live our life. 
That is our mission. That's our mission here at Beacon Baptist Church. And I hope you choose to make that your life's mission. Have a great night.